the official state nut of Georgia. I thought that was Stacey Abrams. Oh, God. You're listening to Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong. Welcome to episode 163 of the Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong podcast. I'm Dave Roberts. With me as usual is the captain of the ship, writer, journalist, author, Jessica Salagi. I don't know if I like the word captain. No? Why is that? It's kind of like masculine, like like a BMW. You know, like Mercedes is more feminine. BMW is more masculine. Captain just seems very manly. I don't... Very manly? Yeah, you got anything better? Admiral? <laughs> sure, that sounds admirable. Chief? Yeah, I'll be the chief. Queen Bee? Eh. <laughs> eh. Eh. <laughs> the machine gun princess? Yeah, that's great. That's better? Yeah, that'll do. It's, it's just aggressive enough, it's still feminine. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. I love it. How, How are you? How was your week? Oh, it's so good. The legislature's done. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. As we head into our sign, sign die or sine da extravaganza. Hmm. Man, it got How cold last week. It was really cold. I did not enjoy it. I I hate winter. I'm ready for summer. I'm a better person in the summer. Yeah, I thought of a a book a book title. Called Flip Flops or Snow Boots, March in Georgia. Right. But we are now out of March and into April, so it is no longer your month, Miss Feminine. And you just had a birthday. I did. I did. I was I had an Easter birthday this year. Don't ask me how it was because we're recording before it. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how we were gonna swing that, but I was gonna let you lie about it. It's okay. <laughs> if you wanna lie about your birthday. Just bluff my way through it. Yeah. It was great. I had cake. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I'm fairly certain that, 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 I, that I'll, I'll eat stuff that's not good for me and make myself get fatter. <laughs> Especially since my parents are, since my parents are in town. And, nice. and And uh, my mother will make it, make sure, like, do you want another piece of cake? No, mom, I'm fine. Well, I went ahead and cut it for you. Thanks. Because yeah. I'm over here wasting the F away. Pol- <laughs> Polite eating. That's why I hate holidays. <laughs> Light eating yeah i mm-mm. well we do have an update on our past stories a couple yeah state rep park cannon kaboom in addition She's- to her colleagues refuting uh, refuting the details of a 13 page report cannon has taken out the world's smallest violin to play us all a tune jessica yeah so she had a press conference the day after adjournment she had she wasn't there so she 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 waltzed out of jail like the week the day we recorded the last show and you know in all her glory and victimhood had her, her attorney and all this stuff which i'm not saying i mean she's facing criminal charges whatever I, you you need an attorney i i agree she she showed up to the capitol in a sling and they said that they're they're still evaluating her injuries and all this stuff and there was an nbc story where the title said georgia legislator qu- quote, shaken after being, quote, dragged out of state capital. And I'm just super disgusted with how this story has evolved. She was not dragged. I mean, you can you can slow down the videos and watch all of them. You can look at pictures. There were plenty of pictures taken. The media has analyzed in like second by second clips and put them out there. And in, in most of the photos, she's literally ahead of the troopers because she's flailing about and dragging her feet and they're behind her acting like a damn child yes who's being acting taken to like a time a out yes when she when we all know that she knocked on i mean whether she was knocking or banging she was doing that for attention because all those people were behind her with cameras and everything that happened she got exactly what she wanted she wanted to be like nikki williams the senator who well she's now a congresswoman in the fifth district but she was chair of the democratic party and she was a state senator and she got arrested at the capitol um 
gosh, I think it was two sessions ago. I, I don't even remember what it was about, but it was it was all theater. And, you know, I don't agree with that. But if that's how you're going to play politics, that's fine. But don't don't embellish the story about what happened because she was she was not dragged out of the state capitol and to show up in a sling. To, so, so she was there Monday, I think. And then Tuesday, she was not there because it was a committee day. And they said that um, her attorney put out a statement saying that she was spending t- resting and spending time with her family after the violent arrest and that she sustained injuries. And her team was working on determining the extent of those injuries. Her um, team. Her team, her team. team. In other words, her team of political advisors wants to see exactly how far we push the victimhood before we have to provide evidence. Yes. And keep in mind, like she walked out of jail. Fine. Also, I'm super disappointed that they have not released her mugshot. Like if it was me or if it was you or anybody else or if if it was a conservative, that person's mugshot would have been the photo they used on all the pictures. But instead, it's her with her misused sling um on the cover of you know the ajc and for nbc but her listen to this quote from her attorney because the nbc article about her being dragged um i think is and and, uh, on the the note of her being dragged like if, if you've watched any or all of the videos that were taken the the trooper said, you know, like they gave her warnings and everything, told her to stop and she didn't. And so they said, you know, we're going to arrest you if you don't stop. And she placed her arms behind her back willingly. And there's like the most courteous and polite photos of them handcuffing her while she stands up straight with her hands behind her back. And then she, like we said on the show last week, was the one that twisted herself around so that she would be walking a different direction and she was kicking her feet and all that. But this is what her attorney said. She's been reflecting on what happened. She's been preparing for the legislative days that are ahead. Obviously, this was before adjournment. And she's appreciative of all the supporters. She's focused on fighting for voting rights, civil rights, and to make sure she's an advocate for social justice. She feels like she stood up in the spirit of her ancestors to fight for the right that many fought and died for and that were beaten and bloodied for. End quote. Yeah. Um, again, if, if if this was her hill to die on, literally and figuratively, uh, so be it. I, I'm not going to, you know, if she if, if if these are the things that she believes and these are the things that she believes. But under she she was not mishandled by the police. And I think it's disgusting for her to imply that she was when there are people who really are mishandled by the police and the, they're not even similar situations. Look, I do appreciate the fact that she color coordinated her sling to the outfit. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because that's very important to make sure that if if everybody's wearing all black, that you want to go ahead and get a black sling. Well, it was a dark day. Yeah, but that's a special order sling. You don't just when you get uh, (laughs) discharged from the hospital, you don't walk out with slings that that are that are, you know, the color to match your outfit. You walk out with a blue and white sling. Mm hmm. With this much. I know that one has like a neck, um, a neck pad and everything. Oh, yeah. Like, was she Amazoning from jail? Like, I think my left shoulder... And and I'm guessing she's right-handed. So she made sure the left shoulder, left arm, is the one that went into the sling so she could keep doing things with her right hand. Also, are we going to talk about how the troopers that are at the Capitol are the seasoned ones? Like, they don't send trooper in training or, you know, little Timmy who's six weeks out of the school. They don't send him to the Capitol to deal with you know, the lawmakers and people, lobbyists and everything. Like, these are the guys oh, that... That's have, a lot lighter. That's not nicer. I was going to say dip... Well. I mean, it's one thing if you just have one on the side of the road you're writing a ticket to, but the Capitol's full of them. Right. These, I mean... And a 13-page I mean, report. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed that there was a 13-page report. Like, uh, Home Fry took his time and really, like, went minute by minute on, on what happened. And and obviously he needed to, but 13 pages is a lot. And I don't know, sometimes less is more. Like if you, if you don't say as much, there's not as much for an attorney to rip apart. But um, he, he said that in the back of his mind, the, the, the one of the troopers that wrote the report or contributed to it said that he was thinking about January 6th in, was it the 6th? Yeah, in the Capitol, in the United States Capitol, about how people 
you know, like mob mentality. If if she wasn't going to listen, then other people would start doing it. And he was just concerned about that and keeping order right, wrong or indifferent. I mean, if that's what he said he had in the back of his mind, then so be it. I mean, you know, uh, uh, whatever. She, she's a turd. She's just a turd. And she'll yeah. compl- uh, continue to be reelected. If she wants state Senate, she'll get it. If she wants, probably wants to go to Congress and she'll get it. Because she's going to rerun this and all of her campaign ma- mailers and everything else that she's standing up for you. Well, and, I'm and, disappointed. She's probably going to get a check. Oh, Jesus. And let me tell you something. It is very insulting to say that ID requirements are racist because that implies people of color can't obtain identification. And they don't have the means to get a free ID. <laughs> I I can't. We. I, I, I mean, can't. It's, it's, it, don't people realize they're insulting you? They're saying you're not smart oh, enough. Know. You're not smart enough to be able to go down to the DDDS and wait in line. And I just did this yesterday. Wait in line for about five minutes, and then go get your picture taken and have the ID mailed to you. It's and not. And you that also hard. can't find your way to the polls in 18 days, and. I mean, yes, yes, you're, somehow, you're just an idiot across the board. <laughs> Their right. constituents are idiots. Yeah, just That's poor you. Saying. Just poor you. Ah, oh, poor you. By by making you go somewhere, they're oppressing you. Ah. Oh. I mean, it's uh, and the people, the fact that people swallow this propaganda. A lot so of people Kemp, do. Yeah, Kemp rolled back a number of COVID nineteen restrictions. And his latest executive order signed on the last day of Women's Month. <laughs> well, it has nothing to do with it, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, um, I was talking to my mom about this and we were laughing because, I mean, I, I used when when he first started with his executive orders, I would read them all and so I could report on them. And then it kind of just got like he was renewing the same thing over and over. And so I would just report that it was renewed and move on. It was just terrible. But nothing was changing, you know, like it had gone up to like 45 pages and nothing changed. And I think a lot of people kind of just started um, ignoring, obviously, some of the restrictions and I, you know, the ban on gatherings and police can no longer shutter businesses. As of March 31st, those are two of the provisions that were repealed they also he also took off the like social distancing in restaurants and in gyms and things like that um it's still encouraged but it's not required and and the police can't come in and say you know you got to close your doors because you're not following i assume some of those things had already been done a while ago but apparently not so i think they're welcomed the media of course is blistering him but what's to be expected? Well, he's running a re-election campaign. And he needs to get his base back in line. Some of his base isn't going to come back after the voting stuff. They're nuts. Right. But, uh, but he's, he's trying to get his base back in line on this stuff. It, it was never his place to shutter businesses. It was never his place. It's private property. I agree. And the, customer, the customers have the complete control over whether or not they walk in a place. If you walk in a place and, and you see people swapping spit and sharing drinks and stuff, you, you know what? This probably isn't the place for me. That, that's your right as a consumer. But to tell a business owner, a bar owner, a restaurant owner, that we need you to take your capacity down to 35%. That's ridiculous. How, how are you supposed to survive? And the, and the margins are so thin on most service industry uh, particularly bars and restaurants that they can't survive on it. It, it made them dependent upon the government to, to refer things like PPP. So you've got five waiters standing around doing nothing because you, you, there's not enough to go around. If you can get them to show up to work because unemployment pays better. Uh, speaking of all that, you know, I, I read an article this week or last week rather about how the hospitality industry in general is trying to unionize um, or they're, you know, they're, they're talking about unionizing because of everything that's happened with COVID and particularly in Georgia, they, they want to have some sort of, I guess, bigger voice, um, maybe like the teachers. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but I want to say like, you do realize that government is what killed your industry during 
COVID, right? Like more government is not going to help any anyone, but they don't want to. No, that's that's the only cure is more government. I could totally see a situation where waiters or people in the hospitality industry end up with some sort of stipend from the government for for a while beyond like I could totally see that happening. That would not surprise me the way that we have the way the way one that I mean, the government has victimized them just as they victimize everybody else throughout all of this. But they have victimized the industry. But I, I would not be surprised to see some sort of monthly stipend well you know that i don't know how much of a how much of a handful you were as a as a teenager i was a bastard uh and it, it, i've heard it many times my house my rules so if uh they start taking a stipend that just then you become a subject to the government this is what you're going to do or we're going to take away your stipend this is what you can do we're going to take it away mm-hmm. our money our rules <sighs> So we have Coinstar, another callback, is going to help the guy that had a thousand dollars worth of pennies dumped on his driveway, covered in oil. Oil, yeah, oily and dirty pennies. Did you read, okay, so there was an update on his story um, in which he, like, he was, (laughs) when we talked about it, was he trying to clean his pennies at that point? Uh, I don't think so. So he was talking about how, because, you know, like to put them in those coin star machines, they have to be, they can't have anything on them or the machine won't recognize them. Those kiosks that are in the grocery stores and stuff. And so I guess he was, he said he would spend an hour or two every night after work trying to clean the pennies, but he could only get through like $5 worth because they were so filthy and everything. So anyway, coin star came in with the, as the white knight and just took the pennies. They weighed them and they ended up, you know, he... He had nine hundred and ten dollars worth of pennies, but they gave him a thousand dollars for the publicity. Of course, um, the story's been everywhere, but they gave him the cash and they agreed to um, donate up to a thousand dollars to local charities of his choosing. And the guy chose two animal shelters, so like it's a win across the board. Yeah, and, and the only one that looks bad in that is the petty person that he, that he used to work for. Yeah, I mean, e- even the quote in the story was something was something like he got paid. Because he left, apparently they left his his final stub on top of this giant pile of pennies. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, man, what? That guy needs to, they need to make more of that guy. Like, one, th- for, first of all, he shouldn't even have commented to the press. If, if, you're, if you're just going to be an a-hole about it, don't even comment to the press. Just no just comment. Just say no comment, yeah. Yeah. Which, which is pretty good advice for most people. I mean, the publicity... The positive publicity from Coinstar, though, like they deserve a pat on the back because like they're the heroes. There's lots of companies that do this, but and no bank was I mean, no bank was standing up to say, sure, sir, just, you know, bring all your pennies in and you don't have to roll them. We'll, we'll help you, whatever. But in their like it was a the, the press release on it. Coinstar is like, yeah, we we we've been doing this for 30 years and we do 41 billion coins every year and so ninety one thousand and picking them up and helping this guy that was nothing for us it's just a day's work we're happy to do it also we're giving money to animals <laughs> like coin star for the hero of the week yeah and had he claimed those co- coins and taken to a coin star machine he, he would have lost 10 percent. is it 10 I, I didn't know if it was more than that now but that sounds it, right maybe i don't know yeah uh, you're right i thought about that too i wondered if they'd charged him um no they rented him up i know i know he made 90 bucks yeah outstanding yeah i mean outstanding job that's that's what that's what we what those are stories we want to see private industry stepped up and helped this guy and as a bonus we're gonna make some donations to some charities of your choosing and he chose animal shelter i'm i'm down that was uh, (laughs) i think that was a a good thing all around Uh, it didn't involve government you know, it didn't su- that nobody got sued, and everybody's happy. Awesome. The only co- person that comes out of this a hole is the guy that <laughs> put together ninety one thousand pennies to dump in his to dump in his driveway. Well, and technically, the government is still an a hole because pennies aren't actually worth anything. Just like none of our money is. It's just symbolic. But I anyway. tried to put a, a positive spin <laughs> on a story for once. Yeah, and but I had to tell you why you're wrong. 
Oh, yeah, you just poo all over it. Thanks. <laughs> this is a good time to remind you that these are our opinions and not those of anyone not showed, uh, not appearing on this show <laughs> or any respective company for which may work, own, otherwise associate ourselves with on a regular or irregular basis. <laughs> I know, Jesse, I, 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 get in, I, I get in autopilot. <laughs> we have the same disclosure for uh, 150 episodes. Yeah, well, times are changing. Times are changing. <laughs> Cine DA. Bills, uh, just for us to mention, gained final passage. Yeah, so there were a couple that we've talked about on the show already, and so I didn't want to spend too much time on them, but I think we only talked about them when they passed the House, and so um, obviously the Senate can ruin stuff or stall it. But um, the citizens' arrest law, obviously, was one of the big ones from this session. They said they called it repeal, but it's actually repeal and replace. And um, I can't wait till they get start suing people over this. And and it's going to be a nightmare. Um, and remember, we're the f- first state in the nation to start this repeal. But anyway, um, on the last day of session, they passed Senate Bill 222 to declare the pecan or pecan, as we say, south of Macon, um, the official state nut of Georgia. I thought and it was Stacey Abrams. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I don't even get a response. I said, oh, God. <laughs> That's a response. <laughs> um, everyone's like, oh, I thought the peanut was the state nut. Nope. Not Peanuts a nut, it's a le- legume. It, it's a legume, yes. So um, that was super important business for the last day. Yeah, on, on CNA DA, uh, we've got to make sure we uh, say the pecan is the state nut. Yeah. Well, and what about all the other nuts? I guess they have to go to other states. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's so we, we just leave them. We just leave them under the gold dome. Yeah, for sure. Um, then there was, I mean, Kemp's already signed this one into law, but I put it on here because... It's interesting, you know, everyone, of course, it was a a campaign mailer issue to have the standard deduction increased for taxes. And that actually doesn't start till 20 until they, well, it starts next tax year. So you're when you file taxes in 2023, but it's supposed to cost the state $199 million a year to not collect that tidbit of taxes, which I think is what $1 a week for married couples um but because of biden's cares act or not cares act what american rescue plan we could actually be penalized in federal funding at a rate of 199 million dollars a year good lord yeah it's it's a cluster um chris carr's fighting for us though you know he's he's standing up and saying he's asking biden not to interfere with the state's abilities to cut taxes so i'm sure biden's taking that under advisement i'm sure i'm sure biden's up there biden i can't remember his own name let alone know who the hell chris carr is and chris carr jumped in as soon as everybody else did oh sure sure um last in first out i'm not gonna go there um hb 146 which was the paid parental leave for state employees we're giving paid parental leave to 423,000 parents in the state uh, for birth of a child, adoption placement, or foster child placement, which I have a huge problem with this one because uh, you just increase the benefits package for everyone. And it's not just like if a mother, you know, it it could be like, let's say you have two teachers in the same school system. You have to give them six weeks total of paid parental leave in addition to their sick leave and vacation and it's just garbage. It's Houston Gaines and his garbage. Well, um, I will say most large corporations already give adoption leave. Uh, they for give, both parents? Well, yes. I mean, like if, if both parents were to work for the same company. or and, and typically what happens with that is because you have a year to use it, one parent will use their time. And I don't think it's six weeks. I think adoption is usually four. But if you work for the same company, you would use your four weeks and then... Uh, your significant others would use mm-hmm. his four weeks to do that. And and then you'd have eight weeks of not having the baby in day, daycare and, and getting to bond with the baby and stuff like that. Foster yeah, well, care 
foster care is a, a little more is, is a little different because we're not necessarily talking about babies and foster children are a lot of times in and out of homes because they will get reading out of their family and then end up back in the foster care system so you could end up taking an additional six weeks every year as if you're if you're one of these parents or one, one of these these people and look god bless these people that are willing to open their homes absolutely to, uh, god bless these folks uh i think six weeks is off for foster care is probably over the top but god bless people who will open their homes and bring kids out of out of troubled situations uh, god bless those people but I, six weeks is a lot well it, I, it's three weeks unless it's like unless both parents you know are working in the either a state okay. employee or teachers but 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 my issue first of all on from a traditional perspective um i i'm not of this belief that like dad needs to be home with mom for the first three weeks like that's just it's just weird also i'm old enough to remember when people just banked their vacation time and banked their sick time and used it as they saw fit because we already the georgia legislature already passed a measure that said that um sick leave for could be used for anything like it used to be you could only use it for when you're actually sick but now they just let you use it at will so you used to plan like you had to plan to have these life events and people did and they made it just fine and if they wanted more time they applied under fmla like men can already apply under fmla hey look it it's for especially for large corporations it's a recruitment tool okay well it's, the government and, is not a recruitment corporation well i understand I, i'm talking about the, the the theory of it in general and i know most fathers don't take time with they take a time addition to so you get your four weeks or six weeks whatever i don't even know because i don't have kids i don't know what the recovery time is so say it's four weeks and he gets an additional three weeks yeah so mom goes back to work after four weeks and then dad stays home for three weeks with the baby and the, the baby's a full seven weeks old before they start going into any sort of daycare situation uh yeah that that's that's what i see now i can tell you when my nephews were born my, my two youngest nephews uh my my younger brother is a uh, is a executive for a, a trucking company, and trucking companies don't play that game. Like you need you need to get your butt back to work. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not. I mean, the issue here is that people are like, well, I just we can't afford to take FMLA because it's not paid. Well, not my problem. Plan. Not just plan as well. I will tell you, we waited too long. We waited till we could we could afford to have kids, and and we didn't because you know by that time it was too late. Uh, but it's it's generous enough to say to say that you're guaranteed to have a, your position or a similar position after uh, after you take care of whatever life event you take care of. Because look, the business unit, and this is where government is is different from. Private industry, the business unit has to survive. It doesn't matter. You can be as nice as you want, but the business unit has to survive or nobody's getting paid. What happens when you have like, I don't know, when we had this conversation last year about this time about COVID babies, you know, where you have this like surge of teachers, you know, that all show up back up to school and knocked up and you don't, I mean, like there are impacts to this. Yeah, they can have kids as much as they want and everything, but like there's a cost to three additional weeks of paid like there there's a there's an actual cost to that. Oh, cluster pregnancies is a thing. It's absolutely a thing. Uh, my mother was was working in a bank when she was pregnant with me and uh the the lady I mean been friends I mean my entire life. Lady right next to her was was uh pregnant with with her son at the same time. Like, can you imagine trying to be the manager of that office like, uh-oh. Uh oh, but you know, of course, staffing was a little better back then. Where, you know, if that happened to to Connie with 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 her staffing levels now, they couldn't survive. Right, and it's, it's a, Houston. And it's a specialized job. It's not like you oh just call just call an attempt. You can't just call an attempt for things that require people with an education. So anyway, we've beat that up. So Jessica, why do you hate pregnant women? <laughs> 
And uh. now we're going to get protested because I, I said that the only people who can get pregnant are women. <laughs> God. <laughs> and uh, no, I'm not. Mm-mm. We got to go on. Yeah, HB 286, prohibition on defunding the police gained Senate approval too, Jessica. Another Houston Gaines winner. Um, God, they said that he might run for Congress um, in Jody Heiss's district. And I hope he does because he'll lose and then he'll be gone. But um, he's such a twerp. But this this passed. The only really only big changes that came from the Senate's version of it was it previously didn't apply to police departments with um, fewer than 10 employees. But now they they increase it to 25. So, you know, more exceptions. It's just stupid. So Um, but those are the ones that I mean, there's there's plenty of other bills, but those are kind of like the big the big ticket ones that we talked about previously. A couple of the ones that we didn't talk about. um, One of my favorites, Senate Bill 115. It didn't end up passing, um, but it came down to the wire and then the Senate ended up not liking when the House changes to it. But there was going to be a requirement when you get your license to take to have education on how to talk to law enforcement officials. And this was by Senator Randy Robertson. And as I've said before on the show, um, Randy Robertson is the former president of the Georgia Fraternal Order of Police. And Randy Robertson is why I tell people that I like in law enforcement to be a member of the PBA and not the FOP, because Randy Robertson is an idiot. And Marty Montahan, who's a a rep out here. Look, allegedly, here's here's the problem. I have if you wanted to add a legal tidbit to driver's education. And this legal tidbit is these are the, what you're required to do. And these are your rights. You don't have to do a field sobriety test. You don't have to let anybody search your vehicle without a warrant. You are not obligated to take a breathalyzer on the side of the road is not admissible anyway. Those so things wouldn't be included. No kidding. But, but, but including anything is going to get them sued because if you input, if you put that in there and then somebody gets shot anyway or gets tased or, you know, whatever, they're going to say, well, I went, you know, according to this manual, I followed steps one through five and this still happened to me. And so I'm going to sue. No, I want a class say, all right, class, repeat after me. Not without a warrant, officer. Well, I'm going to be a kind of a jerk on that and say, if you don't know your rights, then... Well, that yeah. should be part of education. No, you're right. I mean, and I, don't, I don't think necessarily part of driver's education. That needs to be part of your school education. What rights do you have? Yeah. You know what? You know what obligations do you have as as a citizen? What rights do you have as a citizen? You know, how do you know if you're if uh, if your if your rights are actually being violated, and when are you being an a hole? So, yeah, a, cl- a class on how to talk to, to law enforcement. What's funny about that one is that it was introduced, I want to say, last year. But last year was so weird. And it, last legislative session, I'll say that because then I know it's correct. But for the 1920 legislative session, and it was backed by Democrats. And then this year, old Randy brought it up and the Democrats were against it. And I guess that's because of the changing environment around law enforcement and stuff. But um I don't know what it is, but up is down and down is up. And well, it didn't pass. So to God be the glory. Next year they'll bring it back. They don't. They don't have to bring it back. It's it's already there. Right. Uh, HB five thirty four, Jessica. This is the make drag racing more illegal thing. This was the Kemp initiative. He he pushed this because he was mad at Keisha. Lance Bottoms in Atlanta. So he was sending a message because she wouldn't do anything about drag racing. And um, my mom has spent a lot of time tell, like you when she's she lives on a, a road where her neighborhood's off of a road where people do a good bit of um, stupid things with their vehicles at high rates of speed. And they do it in like clusters of large cars. This is a big problem. I don't disagree with that, but it's already illegal. And Kemp wanted to make it more illegal to send a message that if Keisha's is not going to do it, we'll do it. But the 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 mandatory minimums on this are draconian. It's worse than getting a DUI. And uh, big thanks to Chris Howard, who put a video out. Uh, Chris appeared on our show uh, with the Ahmad Aubrey case. He is a uh, uh, an attorney. He owns Bulldog Law. Uh, super smart guy. He, he, I mean, 
he doesn't he doesn't choose his friends very well, obviously, because I know him. Uh, but big thanks to him. He put out he put out a video, kind of breaking it down that it this includes private property. So if you if it's two o'clock in the morning, you decide you want to do donuts because includes stunt driving, which includes donuts and and uh, and spinning tires purposely. And look, it's already illegal to trespass in that in that parking lot. It's already illegal to damage somebody's property by by leaving rubber in there. It's that's we can already hit you with a misdemeanor or uh, for damage to property or vandalism or trespassing. But these things are, I think, I think the first time is ten days in jail mm-hmm. and a suspension of your license for a year. And if you promote it, you're also in trouble. Right. So I think we talked about it on the show. So, the um, he was a candidate at the time. The DA in Columbus, remember he remember. Excuse me, let me use adult words. He was in his parking lot filming that video, and he had people dra- like doing donuts and stuff behind him, and um, that was one of the reasons that they charged him was because he was present. But again, all the things that we were talking about are already illegal. Right, so let me get straight. If you're videotaping it and you and you you say I say videotaping because I'm old, if you're recording <laughs> it and you go, "Oh, this is awful! Look how awful they are!" No problem. If you say, "Man, that's awesome!" Crime. The, the, what you did is exactly the same. You recorded it and you put you put it out, but your analysis of what happened is what makes you a criminal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stupid bill. It's self serving. It is I. I this is this is another one that was uh, co-sponsored by by Momtahan. Uh I, I the the draconian penalties for being a stupid kid. And if you, if you do it several times, you're a habitual offender and it's a felony. Well, you know Republicans, they love mandatory minimums. Tough on crime. Right. Why do you hate cops, Jessica? Do we get you you hate <laughs> pregnant women and you hate cops? What else can we I get don't to know. today? We're only just beginning. <laughs> There's still 22 minutes left. <laughs> well, right. We've only just um, begun. Your boy Jason had a so there was a bill HB 218, which was a really really good bill, and basically what it did was say that probate judges cannot refuse to issue and renew uh, weapons carry licenses in Georgia during declared state of emergencies, and that the state cannot shutter those businesses during a declared state of emergency because shall not be infringed is supposed to mean something. And your boy, Jason, and of or however you call it, introduced an amendment on the Senate floor and basically like took all the strength out of it and said that, well, he put something in there about, you know, how Kemp was saying like a couple of weeks ago about how, nothing in the executive orders and everything like this state will not limit how people practice religion and all that, that stuff. He put an amendment in there to, to be good. And then on the second half of it, he said that the businesses can be shuttered under a health emergency if they're not complying with the rules and regulations set forth by the executive order, which totally eliminates like the, the oomph behind it. The, cause it, Kemp, I mean, we we just kind of got on him a little bit, but compared to relative to other states, he did, a, in my opinion, he did a good job. You know, I don't like how businesses had to shutter or limit themselves, but it was still a lot better than a lot of states had it. And Kemp is not always going to be our governor. And Jason wants to say whoever is in charge can just sign an executive order I mean, we'll, we're going to be in a public health emergency for a very long time. And so as long as that is declared, they can do whatever they want and they can they can shut down gun stores. Good Lord. And, and, and again, you have to you have to pass laws. With the assumption that your team will not always be in control. And it's not just team. It's right is right. Wrong is wrong. It is wrong for the government to shutter a business. Full stop. Period. Yes. Yeah, that's it. A private business. The government does not have a right to take away your your living and the living of your employees because of a perceived health emergency, which on the other side of it, 12 months later, wasn't that friggin' bad. No, and, and you know, 
the thing about this bill, too, is it, it was kind of all encompassing about gun rights. And and I we we talked about it on the show about the backlog and the probate courts not pro- issuing um, the, the licenses, not re- doing the renewals and just honoring it. And, you know, there's this whole argument about, well, nobody can demand you you show your weapons carry license like that's not allowed and all this stuff. But it's the principle of the thing. And the princ- the thing that has annoyed me across probate, magistrate, state, superior, Supreme Court, all of it is through all of this. They have been compensated at the same rate of pay for doing an inkling of the work and that's unacceptable like it should be ordered right figure it figure it out put some if i mean if 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 the grocery store can continue to operate because they put plexiglass over the little credit card scanner and they wipe it down then the probate court can do the same damn thing right and, and again those folks never missed a paycheck correct and got their stimulus money correct well, some of them. Some of them make well yeah. above that threshold. Well, yeah, but not not your sure. rank and file folks working in the office that are they're taking sure. applications. Not the folks that actually have to worry about the plexiglass, the magic plexiglass, because germs can't possibly go around that that two by three piece. Oh, of but plexiglass. you're gonna touch all my <laughs> that you're gonna put in the bag to send home with me. But I mean, whatever. I just like we don't have time for all this. We're, I'm watching the timer tick up and we still have a long list. Yeah, left. I know. All right. SB 47. Tell me about it. So they, the school voucher program that we have for students, they expanded it to students with special needs, which has not been um, something that we've had in the past. This is a really good thing, in my opinion. School choice is always a, a positive thing. But of course, opponents are angry about it because they said that a child who takes advantage of this would um, lose their federal funding for the special needs and that they wouldn't have certain civil rights protections. But that's the whole thing about choice, like school choice. They're not being forced to go to a private school. They would go to a private school if their parents think that's the best option for them. Um, So the opponents can screw off. So parents with special Mm -hmm. needs children have the opportunity to find a facility that best meets the needs for literally the special needs That's of these children instead of trying to to fit a square peg into a round hole in a public school they have the opportunity to find a specialist that that can help them with the very specific needs of their child and someone said uh, and their biggest argument against it is we're going to lose money you right. scumbag because the, the public school yeah be we should be clear about that the public school loses the federal funding the federal funding does not go to the special needs child like it doesn't go to their bank account. It goes to the school. So, but that's, that's the reason that public schools oppose school choice in general. I mean, yeah. About money. Well, and they can't, they can't hold up to the competition. Yeah. They can't hold up to competition with, uh, with smaller class sizes, individual attention, because they have to, they have to cater themselves to the mass, not, not the individual. And if you have a, if you have a kid that has individual special needs, it's it is damn evil to say that, well, we can't let you go and take essentially the money that you pay the state and you pay into the school system with you to go find specialized need a specialized education for your for your child. It, it just it's evil that, that that is literally saying what teachers claim they don't do, not teachers that schools claim they don't do, which is put money above the needs of children. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure they could save a, a lot of money just by taking taking kids, throwing them in a basement somewhere, and ignoring them for 18 for uh, however many 12, 12 years as they make their way through the grades, hand them a diploma, kick them out the door without actually addressing the needs they have. Uh, they they have for an education and a special needs does, doesn't mean the kid's not functional. It means maybe he needs specialized instruction. Yeah. Maybe he needs to view things a different way that's not conducive to a class of 45 people that needs someone that is going to stand up the shoulder. Let me explain to you how math works. It also could be a physical disability. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But I think, you know, parents have a better idea of what challenges their kids have. And, you know, they have their kids assessed. Well, I'm just going to go lock them away in, in public school and, oh, look, little Johnny got a diploma. Everything's fine. Thank you, George W. Bush, 
whether you hold every child behind, Jesus H. Christ, I, 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 meeting the, the special educational needs of children is a, is a controversial uh, subject because individual school districts may lose money. Kiss my ass. Hell, take the money I pay in with no children in school and, fi- and find a family that, that needs to send their kid to a, to, to a private school and give it to them. In other news, this yeah, Enough this week's episode is going to be like four hours long. Um, speaking of the children, House Bill One Sixty Three. This one is was kind of mind boggling to me because it it passed unanimously in the Senate and the House. Um, but basically, it it directs the Department of Community Health to submit Medicaid waivers um, so that children who are part of a family that receives SNAP and food assistance will be automatically enrolled and automatically renewed in their participation of Medicaid. Um, so like basically <laughs> like, they just assume that if you're on snap, you don't have insurance, um, which it just, I mean, that's the, so they automatically enroll you in Medicaid. I'm all for streamlined process. But there are working parents out there that are that get food stamps. And there are parents who have like a gainful employment with insurance for their families. Right. Well, exactly yeah. I mean, like, yeah. But they have that as a benefit. Like, yeah, sure. It is. I mean, you could assume that somebody who is on food stamps is in a is hit a tough time. That's not always the case. Um, we have we have uh, military members that we are have on food police stamps. officers who are on food stamps, and <clears throat> you can't say Medicare Medicaid is better than Tricare, and Tricare ain't great, but Tricare is, is going to offer more choice than Medicaid. Same thing with any the, any police officer, uh, ambulance driver. It, it doesn't mean that you're not gainfully employed. It means you need a little extra help with food. Now, look, I'd do a snap if I could and do do it everything private, but. No one asked the libertarian in the room, but you have to. All you do is clog up the rolls. Yeah, the, which which Medicaid all is right. not. Me- I mean, it's not the most efficient program anyway. But so, um, ne- more children, more on the children. Um, they made a Senate Bill one hundred seven pass to give um, students who are who have been in foster care or are in foster care free tuition and no fees for colleges and universities or tech schools in the state. Um, doesn't matter how bad their grades are, what kind of family they're placed with, what it, it doesn't matter. Free. Um, and then one other thing that was kind of a big deal, I think, just because it passed in the late hour and it was HR 11, which means it was introduced like super early and they waited until the last minute to pass it. But it's a House study committee to identify and remove barriers to, quote, study the full economic participation or Full, excuse me, full economic participation faced by immigrants and refugees in the state of Georgia. So basically what they want to do is um, study what kind of bureaucratic things are in place that keep illegal immigrants and refugees from getting gainful employment and what we can do as a state to remove those barriers so that they can have jobs. Um, it is whatever we're we're in. Yeah. And then, you know, we're we're missing we're we're going to have to leave off some of our show content this week. But yeah. I did want to mention because we are big on the constitutional purpose of convening the Georgia legislature, which is passing a budget. And they did not pass the budget. Um, it was on the, the, the desks of the lawmakers. It has to be on their desk for an hour before they can vote on it. And at 7 p.m. on the last day, they still had not voted on the final version they finally did approve it but it took them 40 friggin days to do it while uh, they got the state nut out of the way um and all the other stuff and in it they passed 10 billion dollars in tax breaks for corporations for the next fiscal year sports betting get get uh yeah that was a late hour thing oh yeah he's an idiot um he he was in rules at 7.30. Again, 
promoting it and saying like this is we're already doing this in Georgia, but the state isn't any making any money off of it. We've got to get this done. Um, thankfully, it didn't pass, and he went home with without his ball once again. But um, so even things as simple as like streamlining the federal hemp regulations to make ours match what the feds have done in the last year, they had to do a conference committee at 730 because they couldn't come up with a solution because they just try to jack wagon everything around. And um, and then, of course, we've talked about cash bail on the show before. It's, what? Sorry. Yeah. You go ahead. Yeah. The 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 lumping of hemp in with marijuana infuriates me because it is it's purposely being. Oh, ignorant. sure. Well, and, and, and it's feeding off of the South Georgia lawmakers who are like, um, crap, I don't know what to do because I don't want to vote for weed. Right. It's a, because the people that endorse me on my campaign are anti weed and they're not smart enough to know the difference they're not smart enough to know the difference between hemp, which is used in textiles, and pot, which is used to get high. And stop children from seizing. But the only other late hour yeah. reindeer game that we saw well that we're gonna talk about was um because we've talked about cash bail on the show, they brought up Senate Bill one seventy four and it was kind of like this amalgamation of all different types of, I guess, justice system related things, but they unraveled some of the progressions that they've made um, and expanded cash bail so that people who don't have sufficient money to get out have to sit there. Which ultimately leads to people pleading guilty because they can't afford just to sit in jail and and miss work. They already can't afford to make the cash bail. fuels the private probation industry and just and right. keeps people in the cycle of it, supervision because Georgia is the number one state in the country all, for having num- people on supervision under supervision. Yeah, all those all those uh, private probation and private prisons that donate tons of money to these lawmakers. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh bills didn't pass. Uh, oh. The, yeah. I do want to clear up something about that. All the headlines in the last couple of days have been about how the House passed this repeal of the Delta tax break to send them a message because they don't like our voting law. That's true, but the Senate didn't take it up, so it's not law. Delta still has their tax break, and that's why the, the House passed it, because they knew the Senate wouldn't take it up, and they weren't actually going to do anything, but you all fell for it. Next. Awesome. Uh, education, HB60, would have created a new voucher program. Mm-hmm. And they were going to, they, they tried to expand uh, H- the this tax credit one, like the, you know, the student scholarship organization, but that didn't get anywhere either. And no vote on uh, HR 118. Commend Stacey Abrams for the vital role she has played in leadership and her deep personal commitment to the welfare of the citizens of Georgia. Yeah. Carla Drenner dropped that and it didn't even get a, I mean, they assigned it to a committee, but it didn't get a hearing. I'm like, really? Like, why would, I mean. Ah, uh, that, that, that is something that, they can take home to the uh, to their constituents. And say, look what I'm doing. All right, Jessica. Uh, we we flew through a lot of these from from CNADA, much like they do on on the floor without reading the entire thing. <laughs> Jessica, do you have any no? Final I don't thoughts? because mine was about friends, and after reading through all of that and talking about it, I don't feel very friendly. So I'm going to save it till next week. Your turn. Uh, I've been watching the documentary called "Q Into the Storm." Is a series on HBO. Uh, and uh, obviously it's slanted a little bit. No. It's on HBO. But what a damn freak show. My <laughs> God. We're talking about a lot of dentally cha- challenged people. Uh, they go to the to the owners of 8chan, uh, which is where uh, the dro- a lot of drops happened. I guess 8chan is gone now. Uh, and the, the founder of 8chan, it, it is an absolute freak show it's like four hours of maury povich uh, with conspiracy theories why are you watching uh, it I, it's one of those things where i i am enthralled <laughs> and now and, you're invested and, and, and they prominently feature marjorie taylor oh green God. she's not on the on as of yet but some of the stuff that she said some of the stuff she said before she ran for congress they show these people that are that are like uh, missionaries outside of Republican conventions ha- uh, with pamphlets going, have you heard of Q? I'm like, oh my God, you sound like, have you heard of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Have you heard of our Lord and Savior Q? Q and not. Here, I mean, this, it is, it is How long baffling. is the whole series? But, 
I don't know. It's two, it's two one hour episodes every Sunday okay. come out, and I'm I'm sure it's downloadable from HBO Plus or whatever whatever you have. But it is uh, it, you you the more you watch it and and, the, and this 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 thing was done over years, and so you see the changes in these people and guy with like handlebar mustaches uh, testifying before Congress with a Q uh, button on his uh, on his collar. I, oh oh. It, it it is scary the and, and what I what I learned was Q doesn't actually say anything he'll just drops it like uh, fifty three forty seven and no one, and, and then there are people doing hours of anal of analysis of what this means and then something comes out like uh, at one point the Senate turned out to be fifty three forty seven everybody goes oh, Q was right what he never mm, it never said that I it, it is it is a, a display of propaganda uh, uh first rate pr- uh, propaganda being being fed spoon fed to uh, easily fooled people so we are running long uh if you like what you heard please like and share us on facebook interact with us on uh on social media uh, if we got anything wrong tell us and and we will address it in the following show so for jessica Slaji. For Eric Cumby, our outstanding editor, and sorry about the bleach. No, we're not. We're not. Sorry. I'm Dave Roberts. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Dave Roberts. Have a great week. 